My most popular video is one from 2018 called How to Make an MMO in Unity. In it, I describe the technical challenges that come with making your own massive multiplayer online game in Unity and how to overcome them. The message being that if you want to make your own MMO, then you can because there are tools, frameworks, and platforms that'll help you do it. If you've got a great idea for a game that only works as an MMO, don't give up. Pursue it. If you don't use Spatial OS, there are plenty of other tools you can explore, like UMMORPG, which is available on the Unity Asset Store, or other third-party tools that integrate directly with Unity. That video inspired a bunch of indie game developers to finally start working on their MMOs, which was exciting, but also a little heartbreaking. Because while most of them had great ideas, ones that even I'd want to play, none of them had the experience or resources required to finish, market, and support a project of that scale. Uh, well, you know, I, I can't help it because the, the chat's still talking about MMOs. I'm going to go on one last little bit. All right, all right, all right. So, so, <laughs> so my first bit was to say why I don't think you should make one. Because most, to be honest, you probably don't have the experience. I don't have the experience to make an MMO, and I've been doing this for a relatively long time. I would never suggest someone start by making an MMO. That was Jason, a developer who's worked on many successful games. In that clip, he freely admits that even he doesn't have the experience to work on his own MMO. But why? If you've ever spoken to him on Discord or watched our live streams, you know that Jason is a very smart developer, and he probably could use a platform like Spatial OS to build a small MMO in a reasonable amount of time. So is he being modest, or is there more to making an MMO than just the technical challenges? Let's imagine that Jason does release his MMO. The first thing he'll need to do is attract some players, because who wants to log into a massive online world that's empty? So he'll need to convince some people to play his game. And not just some people. In fact, not even just a lot of people. But by definition, he'll need to convince a massive amount of people to play his game regularly. Which is one reason why Jason may not want to make an MMO because they compete with everything. Not just other games, but the time of the people who play them. That's school, work, free time, and everything in between, all competing for the player time. And if he can't win, the playability of his MMO will suffer greatly. But Jason's pretty popular, and he may know a thing or two about marketing, so we'll pretend that he can attract enough players. How is he going to keep them interested? Since its release in 2017, Bungie has added a lot of new content to Destiny 2. In fact, to date, they've created seven different DLCs that each add their own levels, items, and quests to the original game. Think about that. Designing, programming, marketing. There's so much work that goes into creating a single downloadable content pack, and they've released seven. Why would they go to the trouble? They make money from the sales, but is it enough to justify the effort? Surely they could earn more by developing a new IP. So there must be something else to it, and I think it could be found with the players. Or lack thereof. According to SteamDB, Destiny 2's player base has been steadily decreasing since day one, going from a high of almost 300,000 players to a low of 87,000 in the past couple days. And that's with seven DLCs. Could you imagine how many players they would have lost if they had released any less? Or worse, none at all? The numbers don't lie. Even a game as popular as Destiny 2 has to do everything it can to keep its players coming back for more, which means that Jason will too. He'll need to design, create, and market new content regularly just to compete. But maybe he's figured that part out too. He does know people in the industry, so I'm sure he can outsource some of the work at a reasonable price. Hey, maybe he'll even get into a rhythm releasing new content every few months and attract even more players than he originally anticipated. That's a good problem to have, right? Well, yes, but it's also an expensive one. Let's say that Jason's MMO pulls in an average of 500 players per day. Not bad, right? His fictional game is relatively small, so we'll imagine 500 players running around a server the size of your standard game city, like uh, Stormwind in Classic World of Warcraft. If we cross-reference that with the price of a Spatial OS game instance, Jason's looking at about $65 a day, or roughly $2,000 a month. 
It may sound a little high, but he should be okay, assuming the initial game sales and membership fees offset his monthly cost. All he has to do is keep an active player base and keep selling copies of his game. Because if he doesn't, he could end up costing himself way more than he initially invested in the project. And that's really where a lot of his capital will go, in keeping his MMO relevant. So you can kind of see just how much of a risk it would be. And if you know Jason, you know that all of this would not be worth the effort to him. But maybe there's some indie devs out there watching right now thinking, I can handle all that. And if that's you, don't click away just yet. So you're telling me there's a chance. At the end of the day, I'm not saying it's impossible to make and support a successful MMO in Unity. I've been following Legends of Aria since I backed it on Kickstarter in 2015, and it's made a lot of progress. According to SteamDB, it even got a small bump of players this December. Albion Online is another great example that's being developed with the help of a good friend of the channel, Jason Wiseman. Wiseman and his team have created a sandbox MMORPG that looks great and has an active community of players. But those games have something that most indies don't. Teams of seasoned developers with lots of capital. I mean, I don't doubt that there are plenty of talented developers that could produce an impressive MMO by themselves. I just don't think it's a realistic goal. So where does that leave someone who really wants to make a massive multiplayer online game? Well, I guess the first question that comes to my mind is, why an MMO, a project of such grand scope? Why not make a game that's more manageable? Heck, why not make a couple of small games that you can finish and use to develop your own style as a game developer? Artists don't become famous by painting one great work. They create thousands of pieces and cultivate their skill over years of practice. So why should indie game development be any different? I say all this because it was the idea of finally making my dream game a reality that got me into game development in the first place. Now, it wasn't an MMO, and I'm too embarrassed to tell you what it really was, but the point is, is that I was way too ambitious when I first started out, and it hurt my growth as a developer to keep trying to make this huge project happen time and time again. It wasn't until I started focusing on small projects and seeing them through from start to finish that I really started to grow. If you really want to make an MMO, you sure can. But I'd suggest putting it on the back burner. Create and release small games so you can focus on developing your skills as a game developer and maybe even have some fun along the way. And then when you're ready and finally have everything you need to make your online world a reality, well, maybe you won't even want to anymore. Special thanks to my top supporters, Berkwest 3D, Darkwest Photography, NZ, Richard Stance, Thomas, Rstar, and Trond.